G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. We're out here with Walters Fencing and James from Walters Fencing. James, how Thank are you. you today, mate? Good, mate. And we're putting up a fence for another video, but we thought this particular topic probably deserved a video of its own. And you can see behind us that we've got a stage set up in a corner and it's protruding into the paddock. Now here's the big controversial question. Is it better to have your stays run along the fence line and put two stays on a fence post in a corner or is it better to have the one protruding into the paddock? Now, James, I'm smelling a bit of controversy brewing with this topic. Yeah, the keyboard there is. warriors will be out already, um, but there's good reasons why you put a stay right into the paddock rather than run it down the fence lines. And there are some caveats. If you're working in laneways or high pressure areas, high traffic areas, you obviously don't want tripping hazards sticking out into the paddock. Yeah, absolutely. But in larger paddocks like this, we've got a single stay protruding into the paddock. People are going to get a little bit cranky. I, I can I can feel people typing in the comments section already. But you've got a, phys, a basic physics theory as to why you prefer to have a single stay into the paddock rather than two stays along the fence. Yep. And you can explain that with push-ups to begin with. I can with. explain that with a very rudimentary uh, gymnastic trick, yes. Righto, so this is our single stay into the paddock and this is my attempt to uh, do a planking manoeuvre. So as you can see, I've got both hands pointing to the ground and I'm well supported. So this simulates a single stay into the paddock. As soon as you start spreading the angle out, it becomes increasingly harder, gravity takes over, or in the case of a fence, it pulls out of the ground. So the further out I go, and there we are, we're stuck. Fence has fallen over. So there's another way of illustrating this if you don't get the push-up idea and that is that both James and I are going to stand on the stay block where it meets the ground. So this is our effective stay length when it pokes out into the paddock. James and I are going to now walk backwards in our best interpretation of an arc back to where the fence is going to be when it's strained up and we'll illustrate what happens to your effective stay length. Let's walk James back to the fence. So I think we've done a reasonable job at getting a circle yep, there. about as good as we're going to do without a tape measure. <laughs> now we're going to walk straight into each other. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your new effective stay length if this stay was actually two, one on each fence line. Correct. We've shortened that by a metre. We've therefore created more of a tripping point. We're going to end up with jacking corner posts more easily. Not necessarily always the case, but more easily. So if you are tempted to run your stays down the fence line because you've got small paddocks like I do or you're in high traffic areas, consider a longer stay because what you're going to be doing is compromising your stay if you maintain the same length. So when would you double stay a post? All right, so there's a couple of occasions when uh, double staying, so having one pointing on either fence line is preferable. Yep. Uh, the main one is when there's a chance of the stay getting knocked off or destroyed. So, for example, if you're doing a cattle laneway and the laneway has a kink in it, yep. your one corner you can easily single stay because it's out of the pressure zone. And where the kink is where the cattle are walking, you don't really want to have a stay pointing into the middle of the lane because it's going to get well, damaged. It's gonna... dangerous for the cattle yes. and it's bad for your fence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in that case, yes, you would definitely double stay. Yep. Um, examples would also be a roadway uh, where we've council compliance etc you don't want to have a traffic obstruction or a danger to cars pointing out someone the runs off the road and they've got a ramp yep, yep. exactly yep and then probably a third example would be in a house yard where you want to maintain the lawn so a house yard will generally be a smaller area and you'll have less tension on the fence anyway, anyway. Yep. and you want to get in and whippersnip and mow and mowing and whippersnipping around this is not exactly easy. It's not conducive to a good weekend, is no. it? No. No. But if you've got larger paddocks and you're dealing with greater areas and you want your fences to stand up to high strain, then this is definitely the way to go. Thanks, Jones. Yep, no worries, Great Tim. Tip. Get on to Walters Fencing if you want some professional fencing done around the Tamworth area. And if you want to find out more tips and tricks, don't forget there's plenty more on timthompson.ag. Subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next week.